Welcome back. For months, we've been feeling the strain on our wallets. So, what is President Obama doing about it anyway? Gasoline and oil, the very lifeblood of the American economy. We rely on it to get us to work, to run our businesses, to harvest our food, to heat our schools. And there's an oil and gasoline footprint on virtually everything we do. Oil and gasoline matter to us a lot. Since President Obama took office, gasoline is up over $2 per gallon. That translates to nearly half a trillion dollars of our hard earned wealth stripped from Main Street Americans and deposited into the bloated bank accounts of Middle Eastern sheiks and leftist dictators like Ahmadinejad in Iran, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, and Putin in Russia. So why would the Obama administration ignore a massive and unprecedented increase in gasoline prices? There's only one answer. It's because they have no answers. Listen to the man in charge of our energy policy, Energy Secretary Stephen Chu. Chevy Volt, do you drive one? Uh, no, it, I don't own a car at the moment. In trolling the uh, the cost of gasoline at the pump, do you give yourself an A minus? I would say I would give myself a little higher. They give themselves an A. Gas is up 115 percent. Prices for everything are skyrocketing. Food, clothing, airline tickets. Yet they give themselves an A. Denial, delusional, or both. It's an election year. You think they would be more concerned? You'd think they'd have some studies, some research, some solutions. Here's what all the president's men came up with to solve our dependence on foreign oil. There are things that you can do individually, though, to save energy. Making sure your tires are properly inflated. Getting regular tune-ups, you can actually save just as much. Algae. If we can figure out how to make energy out of that, we'll be doing all right. President Obama. Secretary Chu, EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson, and Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar. Just stop. Stop and listen for the next few minutes. Listen, learn, implement these ideas, and you may save the middle class hundreds of billions of dollars. You may bring prosperity back to America. Ignore it, however, at your own political peril. The naysayers, they've never been up here. They've never seen Bruto. They've never seen Anwar. They believe these bogus, phony, extreme environmentalist fundraiser pictures of what Anwar is all about. Out of the 20 million acres set aside in Anwar, there is wilderness, there is refuge area, there are some um, more beautiful, more scenic landscapes to look at, but the 1002 area, the 1.5 million acres that have been set aside for the oil and gas development, including the 2,000 acres that are needed for the footprint for the development, that's the barren remoteness that you're looking at. I'll tell you what, Americans have been uh, sold a bill of goods when it comes to what is actually up there in Anwar and how much it can supply the rest of the U.S. Welcome back. There's not a single person in America who isn't feeling the pinch from this gas and oil crisis. Here's the deal. There is that inherent link between energy and prosperity and energy and security. Oil prices affect everything in our lives including even where we send our sons and our daughters in war. Bottom line is we need to drill more here, where God seems to have dumped a storehouse of safe energy supply right underfoot. Developing resources here grows our economy. It decreases trade imbalance. It creates hundreds of thousands of good-paying jobs, and it secures our union by eliminating dependence on dangerous foreign regimes, regimes that use energy as a weapon. Access to affordable energy and ethical trade, that's the real all-of-the-above approach, and it is key to America's security. And another thing, with America's unsustainable 16-plus trillion dollar debt, there is now talk about dumping the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency, and that's the international currency that's used to buy and sell oil. If that happens, folks, we're going to fill the wages of inflation everywhere, especially at the pump. That, in turn, trickles down to everything else in our economy. So it's one more reason to get our government debt under control with sound monetary policy that doesn't try to inflate away debt with currency manipulation or gimmick-like quantitative easing. So we presented the solution, and it does lead to a more peaceful and prosperous America, not subject to the whims of foreign dictators who actually use our energy insecurity to fund a lot of evil activities against us. We're asking the president if he is listening. We know that the audience is listening. And again, with their input, we have solutions to present. Great.